Welcome back everybody, I'm Dave and today we are going to go through the cosine rule. So I'm going to talk briefly about how I know to use cosine rule, um, what the formula looks like and how we can set up the problem. But in these two examples I'm going to go through how to find a missing length or finding a missing angle depending on the problem. Let's dive in. Okay, so let's briefly look at the formula and then let's get on with those questions. Um, what scenarios might you have? Well, on the left here, I have what's called a side angle side problem because we have a side and then we are given the angle in between another side. Uh, the value A is an angle and its corresponding opposite side is known as like lowercase a. So this is why people call it a side angle side problem. I'll call it like uh, case one. Right? And this is basically a, um, a scenario where we may need to find um, a missing side, that being lowercase a, the opposite side. That's what's missing. Um, the formula that you would use for that then is the one that you would find in many textbooks, which is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. Now, I like that one because it goes like alphabetically, like a, b, C is very easy to remember. In some courses, that formula will be given to you, or it may be given to you in a slightly different um, format. So, for example, some people uh, put C squared here. But if you do that, then you'll need to change that to an A and that to a capital C. Now, I think that's a little bit harder to remember. So if, I, if you're in a course that doesn't provide it in a formula booklet, then I would rec recommend that you just remember this format. Okay, um, on the right-hand side, then we have a side, side, side problem because there are no angles given. So you might think, how are we going to solve this? Well, that is a perfect use case for cosine rule. So I'm going to call this case two. Usually any other case than those two, maybe sine rule might be more applicable. So uh, what will we do here? Well, we're going to still use this same formula, okay, that I wrote down. But what I'm going to just do is I'm just going to rearrange it to make the angle the subject. So in doing so, what I'm going to do, first of all, is sum uh, 2BC cos A to both sides. So when I do that, I will have 2BC, or cosine A, uh, plus A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract that A squared from this side. Okay, so the next line down would read... 2bc cosine a is b squared plus c squared minus a squared. And then the final step would be to divide through by that 2bc on the left and 2bc on the right. Okay, so the entire side is divided through by that. So therefore, everything on the right-hand side is divided by 2bc. And that is the result for cosine a. But uh, we don't really want cosine A. We want to find an angle in, in one of these use cases. So therefore, that we will inverse cosine on the left and also inverse cosine of the entire thing on the right. So that would leave us with A is equal to inverse cosine of everything in this bracket here. Now, um, you can just go ahead and remember that as well, or you can just derive it like I have done. It just takes a few seconds, really, to derive it. Uh, but in some cases, you will be um, using that uh, out of a formula booklet. right? So when we go up to this uh, problem up here, we could uh, use that for any side, uh, any angle here. So let's say we wanted to find this one here. We could just set up that problem. The capital A is the angle we're trying to find is equal to the following. But don't worry about the letters. If they confuse you, you can just always label up the triangle exactly how you want to. And I strongly recommend that if you are trying to remember too many formulae, there's more chance that you will get this wrong. So I would probably remember is labeling A as the side that you're trying to find, or capital A as the angle. Dependent on the question, even if they label it up as X, Y, Z, for example, you can always relabel the triangle so that you can remember a formula that you're just not going to forget or get wrong. Okay, you'll see that in the um, coming problems.
Okay, so on this first problem, um, there's a clue in the title, missing side, but let's just go ahead and pretend as though it's an exam question. We can see that there's a side, then an angle in between, and then another side. So this appears to be a side angle side problem, and that leads you to believe that it's, uh, we can follow case one. Uh, that means then in case one, uh, we will be using this formula. So a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. Um, now, in this particular case, uh, the opposite side that I'm trying to find actually is a. Okay, so if we look at this opposite side here, this is lowercase a. We can label the other side as b and this side as C, as those are the opposite sides to the, uh, the corners. Now, I just want to note one thing here, is that if for some reason that, that triangle was not labeled up as A, B, C like that, okay, let's say it was X, Y, Z, then you can go ahead and just add your own labeling. Let's say we wanted to find this side then you could just say, well, I remember the video stated that if I'm trying to find that side, that could be A, and therefore that would be A. Now, obviously, that's your working out. Just make sure that you put the correct answer on the answer line and don't write, like, um, angle A is this. Uh, it would be, like, angle X or side ZY. So just don't make a mistake towards the end there. But I would always relabel it just so you just remember one format of this. So let's go ahead and substitute some values in. So we have a squared equals b squared, which is 21 squared plus c squared, which is 15 squared minus 2bc cos a. So 2 times, now I'm just going to put this in brackets here, bc, right, and cosine uh, 105, right. Now, um, I will have to square root all of that. Now, I'm not going to write it out in the essence of time, but uh, you will need to do in the exam. Um, so I'm going to just jump over to the calculator and punch all of that in. OK, so I've just put all of that into the calculator here. So we got uh, 21 squared, press Enter, and we get a length of 28.8, rounded to three significant figures. Okay, so in this problem here, it says there's a missing angle, but in the exam, it won't tell you that. What we're going to look at is what type of triangle we have here. We have a side, a side, and a side. So this would uh, lead you to believe that it's a side, side, side problem. Um, therefore, then, we would be using case two. And if you remember, case two was the one where we were finding an angle. So let's have a look. Yes, find angle A, B, C. So what does that actually mean? Well, A, B, C means we start at A, and then we go to B, and then we go to C. Now, uh, that is always the angle that is sandwiched in between. So it's always the middle value there. Sometimes they write A, B, C with a little like hat on the top of B. It just depends what course you're following. So therefore then, we just need to find that angle. Now what I'll do is uh, here, this is an example of where I might relabel the triangle just to suit my needs, right? Because um, if what I'm doing really is I have a triangle and I have to find this angle here, right? Um, so therefore then, if I just remember um, without too many uh, messy, like things to do with the formula, I could just label this up as capital A, and this is A, and this will be and C. And then all I need to do is remember the one rearrangement for the cosine formula, which was cosine A was equal to B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. Now, how did I remember that so quickly? Well, because I just always stick to this one format, that the A will be on this side, the capital A, and therefore, this subtraction will always be a squared. So I kind of just remember those two things, and that's always helped me remember that formula, regardless of whether it was given to me. Or you can just derive it, like I just showed you a couple of minutes ago. But if that is the case, then what I'm going to do is just going to transfer the values from this diagram, which would be 12, 11, and 13, over to my diagram here. It's not a very good looking tri triangle, but it will do the job when we're substituting these values in. So we have cosine of A, which is the angle we're trying to find here. Uh, B squared in my diagram will be 11 squared plus C squared, which will be 13 squared minus 12 squared, all over 2 times B, which is 11, and C. Oh, and this one thing I, to note here is how did I know which one to label B and C? Um, same thing as before, it doesn't matter. 
It's the A and the A that really matter uh, when you're plugging it into the formula because you just square the others and sum them together. Now, I need to do what I said previously, which is take the inverse of cosine of both sides. So that'll just leave me with angle A. So on the right, it'll be inverse cosine, and I will just draw a bubble around that and substitute that in there. So again, I need to jump over to the calculator and punch that in. Let's do it. Okay, so I've just plugged all of those values into inverse cosine. Uh, check that you're in degrees, remember. If the question's in radians, you'll need to work in radians. But uh, I've just pressed enter and our angle is 59.3, rounded to three significant figures. Good luck with your cosine rule questions. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.